I'm going to go ahead and do number five, just part D. They tell you that f of one is three and that you need to find f of four and f of negative two. What's given in the graph is f prime. So we know that the antiderivative of f prime is going to bring us back to f. So they ask us to write an expression for f of x. Before I do that though, I'm going to just do something more concrete. So I'm going to actually find f of four, I'm going to find f of negative two, and then I'm going to use that information to come up with the general equation. So that's just how I'm going to approach this problem. Also, if we read through the problem, they tell us that the area between negative two and one under the curve is nine, so this area is nine, and then this area between one and four is 12, so we know that this area underneath of there is 12. We're gonna probably use that information when we're solving. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what f of four is. So the way I like to approach this is I'm given information about f of one and I'm trying to find f of four and I know that the integral of f prime is gonna bring me back to f. So again, I have information about one and four so that's how I determine the bounds of my integral. The integral from one to four of f prime of x dx is the antiderivative of f prime just brings me back to f. I'm evaluating that between one and four. So I have f of four minus f of 1. I want to solve for f of 4, so I'm going to add f of 1 to both sides. So that leaves me with the integral from 1 to 4 of f prime of x dx plus f of 1 is equal to f of 4. In other words, f of 4 is f of 1, which was my starting point, plus whatever the area under that f prime curve is, from one to four, right? Because I have my starting point plus whatever area I'm accumulating under the curve, and that's going to bring me to where I am for f of four. Now I have some numbers to plug in. I know f of one is three because that's given information, and then the area under my curve from one to four, under my f prime curve, is negative 12 because I'm going down, so minus 12 is equal to negative nine. Now the next thing they ask us to do is f of negative two. So I'm gonna apply that same type of logic, except now I'm gonna use the integral, and since I go small number to big number, I'm gonna go from negative two to one, because again, I'm trying to find negative two, and I'm given information about one, so that determines my bounds. So from negative two to one of f prime of x dx is going to be the antiderivative of f prime is just f evaluated between negative two and one. So I have f of one minus f of negative two. In this one, I wanna solve for f of negative two. So I'm gonna scoot that over on this side, and then we're gonna scoot the integral over on this side. I'm gonna do two steps in one. So again, scoot the f of negative two over here, and then put this on this side. So I have f of one minus the integral from negative two to one of f prime of x dx. So that gives us three minus, and then the area under the curve between negative two and one is negative nine, because again, that's under the x-axis, so I need to subtract it out. So minus a negative nine, because again, this is minus, and then this integral is negative nine. So I have three plus nine, which is 12. The final thing that they're asking us to do is to write a general expression. What did I do? I'm just gonna look at my answer here to figure out what that is. In general, my f of x is going to be given by my starting point, which is three, plus the area under the curve from one to whatever x I'm going to, from one to whatever x I'm going to, of f prime of x dx. And that's in general how I'm going to do it. The only reason it was flipped here to a negative is because you see that I went from smaller number to bigger number. So isn't that equivalent to the opposite, which is positive 1 to negative 2 f prime of x dx? Yes, indeed it is. And so that does hold to my formula. So that would be the answer to the general equation.